indeed. What are some great moments that you are looking forward to fans seeing, or what are other moments that haven't been pulled from the books yet that you're like, wait, wait, we need this? Um, just in the most general sense, to not give away any stuff. Um, I'm really excited for the fans to see and experience a different tone. Um, you know, anyone familiar with the books knows that book four is kind of a, it's a gear change, and it's and it has a very different flavor to it. Um, and we we approach that um, on a technical level with you know lens changes. We have anamorphic lenses that are kind of widescreen. It's got that frontier uh, look to it. Um, but also, you know, there is a, a kind of gritty intimacy that you um, experience with, with the folks on the Rossi crew and, and the people on New Terra, Ellis, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, you know, you do kind of move into this vast and different uh, space, and yet you kind of delve deeper into each character as well. Um, which you know is a testament to the books and also to the adaptation and the writing because they managed to do both. You know the world does get much larger and yet it also gets far more intimate at the same time. Um, so I'm excited for them to see that. I think there's uh, there's a lot of really interesting characters, fascinating characters that are going to be introduced this season, and we have gotten lucky with the, the actors that sure we brought on board this season. There's so many new, different, interesting characters and different actors that, that you get to see this season. That are really, I'm really happy that everybody's going to get to see that. And the story is about a new planet, and you said the word frontier. Is there going to be kind of a western, space western feel this season? In a way, yeah. Yeah. In, in a way. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we, we had a conversation before about what we, you know, so, but uh, y yes. And I mean, and it's something that, uh, that, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say this is that it, it I, I always hesitate to use the term Western because it, it feels more like. Like a gold rush, you know, it's like the, it's less of like the dusty town where nothing's happening and more like people moving into California when they realize that gold is there. And um, it's just, it's, it's a new and lawless place, you know, and it's just a, um, there is the prospect of a land grab and, you know, you have people who have been there already who have claimed it. And then you've got a corporation who comes in and claims it too. And we are just kind of stuck in the middle. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of all we can say about that. Uh, but um, it does have a, uh, it has a flavor of moving into a, a frontier space. But in terms of style and tone, and the way that it's shot, and the way yes, that yeah, there's, sure. there's definitely that kind of flavor, that yeah. panoramic like mm -hmm. spaghetti western. My question is going to be more personal characters. Since it's all about the crew of the Rossi and how you guys are now. You were spread apart last season. And now you guys have really kind of come back together. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing that broke my heart was really uh, Ni Ni yeah Naomi and um, your characters, your relationship. The, the, the trust and the bond that was there and then that was broken. What is your viewpoint on that relationship going into the new season? Well, you know, I find that so in this season, us as a group, as a family, you know, we've been together for you know five or six years now. We are presented with some challenges that the only way to overcome them is we have to get together and come together and bond in a way. And so with my relationship with Naomi, um, the kind of love that we have for each other kind of overcomes any of the other stuff and we let that go and there's a stronger connection and bond that we have now than we did before because of what we have to overcome or what we have to do in season four. Hmm. Nashville was a little different. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk, oh, I'm sorry. Can you talk about um, working with Bern Gorman and how your characters interact? I, I can talk about how it is to work with him. Um, I'm not sure I can talk about how we interact as characters, but I will say that he's, I mean, such a spectacularly talented actor. First rate. I mean, just an unbelievable actor. And, and the nicest human being. I mean, he has he has a an intensity and a severity to the way that he uh, 
approaches the, the work within his characters and then you cut and he's like joking around and dancing all over the place and it's like he's well, amazing <laughs> it does remind me of a, 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 a when I, the first time I met him uh, he flew in late the night before he's jet lag he's, he's on London time uh, it's Toronto it's just starting to get cold in the middle of Toronto we're in this crater and it's freezing and there's wind whipping and I can't say anything about his outfit but he was he wasn't he was scantily clad and uh, and, it, and it's and I'm a, like it's, I'm an early riser so I'm in a like in a great mood in the morning I love to see and here's this guy that just flew in he's jet lagged he has his size he has this big scene his hair sticking up he's freezing and he's you know can I get a jacket and I'm like hey man what's going on like, and just kind of like overwhelm him and he's like hey how you doing but he, he has to drive a vehicle and the vehicle is obviously not something that one is used to and the way that you drive it is not used to so he's trying to figure that he's trying to you know run his lines and do the scene and I just want to have conversations <laughs> and it was that was a you could just see it he's like yeah 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 it was, it was, it was, a, it was a really fun. We, we talk about that all the time like remember that day I met you <laughs> he's amazing to, to go back a little bit to touch on his book four and I'm assuming season four deals a lot with the themes of like corporations versus the individual and that feels very relevant for now especially yeah. without upsetting Amazon too much yeah. what is it like True. to sort of explore these very like relevant appreciate themes but on like a sci-fi scale you know I think it, for me it's one of the things I'm most proud of about this show is the, the the use of allegory and I think you know within within science fiction it really lends itself as a genre to that you know because if you change the names and the times around you make pertinent subject matter more palatable so you have the potential to spark conversations where maybe people would be closed off otherwise um, which makes the work for me and I think for us just feel really important and I think that's the greatest luxury uh, for an actor frankly um, or an artist is to feel like you are you know sparking those conversations that maybe wouldn't be had otherwise um, in terms of the specific allegory of the Earth Corporation, um, you know, the way I always viewed it uh, reading the books was the East India Company, you know, uh, going to the Spice Islands or, you know, going around the world colonizing places and kind of reaping the resources away from people who were there already and, you know, um, kind of exploiting those spots. Uh, under the guise of um, sanctioned uh, exploration, you know. Um, but, you know, with this show, uh, it's very, I mean, the, the source material is so intelligent and the way that it's adapted is so well done. Um, you get a really comprehensive look at the context of, of what is happening. You know, this is a new, this is a new place. Should, you know, you don't want to contaminate it? Should it be a science team first? Do you allow settlers to get there first? Like, should there, what do you do? Like, what is, what is the ethical um, outcome of what is allowed to happen on this place once, you know, we're preventing people from moving through these rings because we have no idea what's out there. But is that really anyone's place to say that? And to do that when Earth has 50% unemployment and Mars has been trying to terraform their planet for 300 years and there's a thousand ones that already have an atmosphere. Are you going to allow the kids to not have that? Or are the belters who have been disenfranchised for generations? It's like, why not allow them to have what they deserve? Um, you know, all of these questions are ridiculously complex and uh, and each side of things there's no monoliths in this show Mars isn't one thing Earth is not one thing the belt is not one thing there are subsets of subsets of subsets of subsets and they all conflict with each other and it's a messy human narrative and um, I think being able to convey that with honesty uh, is very helpful in this day and age you know and um, and you know I think for me one of the great moments for us was when the Washington Post and the Federalist who have very different views on the world both praised us as this incredibly politically relevant show and it's like oh we're reaching across like we're reaching to everybody and um, and hopefully those conversations can be had in places that just wouldn't happen otherwise. And that's, you know, that's, uh, to go back when you asked about a Western, and I, and I made it clear that it's like tone and style, but the, one of the things I want to separate is the difference between Western is there's usually a white hat and a black hat. There's a good force and there's a bad force, and it's very clear on each side. But 
particularly in the, with this show and this season, there is none. And, and like he was saying, the complexity of like who has a legitimate claim. If they have a really good argument to the mineral rights, and then they have a really good argument, and so trying to battle it out and not really be fully on one side or the other, that's interesting to me. It's more of an honest representation of what we're dealing with every day. Without giving too much away, can you guys preview your like individual arcs, your dreams for season four? <laughs> so there is a reason that Amos seeks out um, space life. It's regimented, it's enclosed, the, your options are, are uh, limited, and your time is constantly occupied. Being on this planet, being in the open, open air, open atmosphere, having this threat that you can't clearly define and there's a constant tension on the air, it kind of brings out of a lot of his past and a lot of things and a lot of the place that he has come from. And we spent three seasons kind of really seeding and, and foreshadowing kind of what this is. Well, it starts to fully, fully expose itself in this and he is going to have relationships and new relationships in this season that also reveals a, a lot of inner life to Amos that we haven't seen yet. I think with Holden, um, I don't I don't particularly like using archetypes when creating character work because it's easy to slip into generalities, but the archetype that I think is closest to what Holden is at in the beginning of season four is this, is this semi-profit-like figure who has a, an ability to communicate with something that no one else can communicate with. And um, it's, it's stretched his psyche to the breaking point already. And by the time you see him in, in the beginning of season four, that relationship has become more normalized. Uh, and in an ironic way, it makes him a much better leader presently with the people around him because he's not sweating the small stuff anymore. He's got bigger things on his mind. Um, but it's also calmed him down in some ways. You know, he's, he's not trying to control every little thing. He's, he understands his place and he's, I think, a bit more humble and modest in terms of where he sits in the importance of the universe. Um, so I would say that uh, his, in, his investigation into what happened to the protomolecule creators continues um, and that, that occupies uh, most of his mental capacity um, because he's the only one talking with it. <laughs>